This is a Granny Smith apple. This is an empty wine glass. Why don't we make wine out of this so that we can put it into this? Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation with shoes doing budget. Of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons below, and I will try and do one of these once a week. Also, if you need supplies, there are also links in the comment section for you to click on. They will get you the stuff that you need to make your wine making hobby a great success. Now then, to make this wine, we need the following. Anywhere from four to eight pounds of apples, four and a quarter to four and a half cups of sugar, wine yeast, lemon, raisins, straining bags, either a gallon or four liters of water, something to do primary fermentation in, jar, jug, demijohn, <laughs> carboy, you take your pick, to do secondary fermentation in, airlock, stopper, hydrometer, and of course, star sands. Now, the very first thing we want to do is we want to wash these apples. Even if they're organic apples, they should still be at least washed. And if you can, just give them a little scrub to make sure that they're clean on the outside and to help remove any of the commercial wax that they put on the apples. So just go ahead and get them into some water. And... Following that, just go ahead and just give them a light little scrub. Let's uh, run some cold water in our pan because what we're going to do is that we're going to core and then chop up these apples and put them in a straining bag. And I want to keep them from turning brown before I have a chance to finish them all. So that process is gonna look a little bit like this. Let's take our first little apple here. Get a good placement on our slicer, dicer, and press down fairly hard. All right. Get rid of the offending part. The rest. All set. Let's get a nice little arrangement here. And let's go ahead and give these a rough chop. Let's get those in a straining bag. That's one. Several more to do. Okay, <laughs> that is that. The apple core definitely made this an easier job. I mean, I could have just ran it through a food processor and chopped it up roughly after I cored it, but there we go. All I need to do now is just tie these off. Hopefully. Yep. 
Glad I thought about it. That would be after I add some of our chopped up raisins. Just a handful of handful of chopped up raisins, rough chop. The raisins are going to give it a little additional flavor. And once again, as I'm going to start saying in all of my subsequent videos, in the event that it should provide some additional nutrient to the yeast, so much the better. But I'm saying for the record, these are in there just for flavor. <laughs> And it really is time for me to get a bigger bag. These one gallon bags have been really a small pain from the beginning. But uh, the water kept it from uh, oxidizing. So that was a good thing. Oops. And then the rest of our raisins. knife out the way before it does something funny. I mean the bag is a really an optional thing. I could have just dumped the apples straight into the fermenter, but it just means cleaning up after primary fermentation. The bags will make it just that much easier to deal with. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and drain out our water. Because the next thing we want to do is we want to take that uh, one gallon of water that we had been boiling earlier, and we want to go ahead and just pour that in. And we're going to let this uh, come down to a nice warm temperature. Then we're going to go ahead and start adding our sugar. It's been a little while and the water temperature has come down to a nice warm temperature. We're going to just temporarily remove these straining bags because I want to add about three and a half cups of our sugar and then make adjustments to that as we go along. But I know I'm going to start with the first three and a half. So let's just go ahead and give that a stir. This smells like applesauce. That's what it smells like right now. Now, I took the opportunity to do a quick gravity reading, and even though the water is still warm, I mean, it's not hot or anything, but the gravity reading that I took with just the three and a half cups of sugar came in at 1.090, which in my opinion, I think is strong enough for this wine. I'm not going to add any more sugar. Hey, wait a minute. Wasn't there like a lemon involved in this process somewhere? Well, yes, there was. <laughs> And at this point, all I need to do is pitch the yeast. Now, normally I use Red Star 
Premier Blanc wine yeast. It's what I've got, so it's what I can use. You, of course, can use anything you want. Normally, I would use a quarter of a teaspoon for a one-gallon batch. But this time, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use half a teaspoon just to make sure. And if I can, I'm going to try and sprinkle it around, even though in this particular case, I'm going to give it just a little bit of a stir. Because these bags are rather large. And I want to make sure the yeast gets around those and into the juice where it will do the most good. And that, place your cap on your fermenter. And once a day, you want to come in and just uh, give that a little stir, at least for the next uh, three to four days. After that, just let it sit for at least a good five to seven days. Then you can go ahead and rack it into your secondary fermentation uh, uh, jug, carboy, demijohn, whatever, and begin secondary fermentation process.